I know it. All airlines have had a tough time during COVID, but the decline of Nok Air is one of the sharpest that I've seen. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Ho Chi Minh City's International Airport. It's late morning thanks to a very pleasant departure time, and today I'm heading to Bangkok. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for my flight or my next five videos in queue, there are some pretty incredible ones coming. Please check out the description below. Check-in was a breeze, considering today our flight was less than half full. The Saigon to Bangkok route is one of the more competitive ones in the region, with 18 or more daily flights on nine different carriers. Seven carriers fly to Bangkok Suwanapum Airport, and the other two to the older Don Mung, which we're heading to today. After a very quick immigration and security check, I was on my way up to the Le Saiganese Lounge, which has become my favorite plane spotting perch in the airport. At this time of day, it's a bit of an odd mix of food on offer, but that's not why we're here. If you want to see a longer tour of this lounge, please check out literally any of my other videos departing from Saigon. I'm sure you already know it, but this is just a friendly reminder that this video was not sponsored by or provided by Nok Air. As with all of my videos, this one was self-funded so I can give you my unbiased opinion. So your views, thumbs up, and subscriptions are greatly appreciated and ensure more content just like this will keep flowing. Our carrier today is Nok Air. Nok is the Thai word for bird, which will also explain the fun and colorful livery that we can catch pulling into the gate. Founded as Sky Asia in 2004, they later rebranded, and for quite some time, Thai Airways held a 39% stake in them which over time has lowered to 16% since they don't really play nice with each other. Despite the airline's small scale, they do currently have the largest number of domestic Thai routes of any airline, though their international network has always been very small with just four international destinations. In 2013, Nok began another side venture in coordination with Singapore Airlines Scoot Airline and formed Nok Scoot, which was a low-cost, medium-to-long-haul airline, very similar to Scoot's longer-haul routes, or AirAsia X. Nok Scoot shut down in 2020, though, due to COVID. They currently fly to 26 destinations on their 17 narrow-body aircraft and have a further 7 on order. Heading to the gate, I got my first look of our 45, I'm sorry, 15-year-old 737-800 in a tropical green livery. Boarding began on time and it almost looked as if she was shy and trying to hide from the camera. Let's take a look at today's flight stats. We'd push back a whopping 14 minutes early and cruise at 36,000 feet for this 67 minute flight, which ended up at the arrival gate bang on time due to us sitting on the tarmac for 20 minutes. Stepping on board was a bit of a time warp. Arrival at Dung Mung Airport can be chaotic at times, so I paid extra for a quote unquote premium seat in the front of the cabin, selecting two alpha at the time of booking. Premium was certainly a stretch of the word though. Fact of the matter is, it's been quite a while since I've seen seats looking quite this rough. Thank you. 
737 seats in general are a bit narrower than on an A320, so that combined with the tight legroom and the suck it in if you weigh more than 120 pounds seatbelt led to feeling like I was being shrink wrapped and prepared for shipment. Due to the curvature of the aircraft, the seats in row one were even narrower, with Bravo and Charlie seats even narrower than that, since the tray table was in the armrest reducing the width further. If I sat in that middle seat, I'd likely need to be pried out upon landing. At least though, there were overhead air vents. As for the seats themselves, they have seen better days, and those better days were at least 10 years ago. As we push back and taxi to the runway, let me just mention that I have flown Noak Air quite a couple of times back in my visa run days, so the state of the onboard product did really come as a surprise today. The spool up, take off, and airport stats are coming up now. Geography was my favorite subject as a kid, I'm still pretty obsessed with maps, but I'm always caught off guard every time we need to fly northwest to Bangkok from Saigon. In my mind's eye, it's always been that Bangkok was much further south. While there is merch available to buy, I was expecting a snack service, which is what they used to do. I remember they used to have a cute little branded box with a branded bottle of water and a branded snack of some sort inside, similar to what Bangkok Airways does. Today though, I just had two choices, water, or nothing. The bathrooms were clean and standard, the soap just being in the sink since we were landing soon. But actually getting into the bathroom was a challenge since the seat recline really does make you commit to where you're sitting. Regardless of how uncomfortable the seat is though, you, you really can't complain if you're descending 40 minutes after you took off. We'd be flying over the city before looping around and landing at DMK from the north. We had what felt like a quick taxi, but then we had a 20 minute hold waiting for our gate to open up. No matter what angle you try, this bird just really doesn't want to be photographed. Immigration was exceptionally quick and the bags came out a few minutes later. Let's head into the flip-flop score. I realize that this is a very short flight, and so of course any old seats or discomfort is fully tolerable. But I have to look at it through the lens of their competition. There are two full service carriers, Vietnam Airlines and Thai Airways, as well as quite a few respectable low-cost carriers, and they all charge around the same price, let's say $60 to $100 one way. So I just don't see a reason to subject yourself to such crappy interiors when you could easily be very comfortable on another airline for the exact same price. That said, I do hope that you enjoyed this video and will join me for a very special video next time as I fly Oman Air Business Class from Bangkok to Muscat.